Chapter 12, Social Outreach. As soon as the news cameras clear away, you and Riley call an impromptu house meeting. Everyone is hungover and grumbling as they pan into the living room and take a seat. Look, everyone, I know this isn't how we wanted to start the week, but we have to recover our reputation. Riley is right. Gamma, Theta, and Cap are out for blood. Gee, I wonder why. Which is why we came up with a f way to fulfill our community outreach hours and get back in the good graces of Greek Row. We're going to repair the damaged houses all along Greek Row. Oh man, I was hoping we could do the naked moving furniture thing again. You guys... <clears throat> don't have any other choice. Stop whining. It's either this or moving back to the dorms with your tail between your legs. You put your hands on your hips and glare down at the grumbling Omegas. Riley leans in close to whisper. I can't lie, I like it when you get all tough. Let's start gathering the supplies. The sooner we get started, the sooner the rest of the frats will get off our back. As everyone starts heading off to unearth the toolboxes, Dahlia pulls you aside. I'm not sure about this, Dahlia. I don't trust the Omega not to turn this into another three-ring circus. The Omegas have just as much at stake we as we do. They won't drop the ball on this. Look, I get the Omega is trying to turn over a new leaf and all, but shouldn't we focus on getting Lambda's charter back? The whole point of a sorority like ours is that we take care of our own first. Dahlia... The Omegas are our own. They may not be Lambda, but they're still Greek. That means we have to look out for them. The Daniel of two months ago never would have said that. Yeah, well, times change and so have I. Dally takes a deep breath and rubs her temples. Fine, I'll call the Greek coordinator to make sure we get credit for this. But if anything goes wrong, it's on you. By the time you arrive at the Gamma Delta Lada house, the entire crew is organized, enthusiastic, and ready to get to work. Well, I'm happy to see that you're punctual, at least. Being on time doesn't mean anything if you don't get results. What? Is he my father? He's even more pissed than I thought. You shake off your negative thoughts and focus on what needs to happen first, replacing the scorched carpet in the living room. Awesome! Someone get me a crowbar! I'm going in! Trevor whips off his shirt and grabs the nearest tool he can find. With a grunt of satisfaction, he starts tearing up the carpet. What are you doing? You can't just start ripping up old carpet like that. And someone should probably remove the door from the hinges so we can carry the carpet out. How big is this carpet? Seriously. As the lambdas start making a plan, more omegas surge in to help yank out the old carpet. Nails and tacks flying everywhere. Heave, Omega. Put your backs into it. Daniel, aren't you going to do something? At this rate, we're all going to end up with tetanus. See what we mean? They can't even do community service without squabbling. Things do seem to be getting out of hand already. You cast a quick, anxious glance at Riley. A few more minutes of this, and you won't even get a chance to redeem yourselves. Riley. What's with you and the Omegas acting without thinking? Come on, Lambda, you know as well as I do. A lot of fun can happen when you don't overthink things. Gives you a knowing wink that's somehow both adorable and annoying. For a long moment, you and Riley seem to be slipping back into your old ways. But seriously, how hard can it be to get everyone working together? We've done it before. Yeah, but it only works when we dangle a competition in front of them like it's bait. Riley snaps his fingers, his ready smile dawning. Danielle, you beautiful genius, that's it. We're always on our backs when we're fighting against each other. And when we have rules in place to ensure no one crosses the line. You and Riley look at each other, eyes fixed as you both come to the same solution. Omega and Lambda can accomplish anything as long as we turn it into a challenge. Just like me and Riley. First team to finish this room wins. You and Riley put your heads together and come up with an easy plan for getting the Lambdas and Omegas to work together. They'll be so busy trying to win that they won't even notice the teamwork happening. Elegant, devious, just like you. You share a quick, heated look before putting your fingers in your mouth and releasing an ear-splitting whistle. Alright guys, we've had just about enough out of you. 
I'm sorry, we. Mm-hmm, which is why Riley and I challenge you all to a duel. Oh, with swords? I've always wanted to do that. No, Trevor, with carpet nails. Daniel and I will lay the carpet on this half of the living room, and you guys take the that half. Whoever finishes first wins. But there are only two of you, like twelve of us. That's why we're the ones in charge. You stand straighter, your hands on your hips, and a look of presidential determination on your face. You and the other lambdas elected me president for a reason, Luna. And that reason is because I can do the work of ten of you. We're going to make you eat those words, Daniel. You waste no time laying out the quick and dirty guideline of the rules. As soon as you finish, their team falls into a huddle. We officially nominate Wyatt and Dahlia to be our team lead. Really? I thought you never compromised, Dahlia. I got a few surprises and me left, Daniel. And I can get along with anyone. Figuring the two of them stuck us in a room together while literally and figuratively they set Greek Row on fire. Yeah, no, good job, guys. <clears throat> in that case, let's start the clock. Everyone dashes to their sides of the room and gets to work. You can hear Dally and Wyatt issuing orders, but your attention is only on Riley. Okay, Riley, first step is removing the existing carpet. How do you want to do this? With brute force, obviously. I thought the whole point of this was so you could watch me flex. He strips off his shirt and tosses it aside. You try not to stare as he raises his arms above his head and stretches, but you feel yourself getting hot all over. Just tell me where you want me, Daniel. I'm all yours. You fix your gaze a few inches above his head, refusing to let that smile get to you. It looks like I'm playing a double game. One to beat the other team, and the other to give Riley a taste of his own medicine. Riley, I want you to... Use your big, strong muscles to help me. You toss a McCoy look over your shoulder, your lower lip thrust out in a playful pout. Won't you pretty please help me? I need someone strong and powerful to hold me while I work. I know this is a trap, but I can never resist a damsel in distress. He comes up behind you and braces your body with his. As he drops his hands to your waist and nudges your legs open, a whole body shiver takes over you. Always remember to bend with your knees, not with your back, Lambda. He slides his hand down your ass as you both dip low and reach for the carpet. His hard, heaving chest braces your back, his breath tickling your ears you work together. I'm pretty sure this isn't how the professionals do this. They would if they did gave them an excuse to wrap their arms around you. Luckily for you, the Omegas had already loosened most of the carpet. All you and Riley have to do is roll it up and carry it outside, the two of you each carrying one end. Too slow, you two. We already cleared ours five minutes ago and we're measuring for the new carpet. Team Plebeian for the win! As you watch the other side working together, you and Riley doubling your speed. You'd better take this end of the measuring tape. We need this replacement carpet to be a tight fit. A tight fit, huh? We seem to know a lot about laying carpet. A tingle of electricity zaps from your fingers to his as you hand him the measuring tape. What can I say? A good shag is all I've ever needed. You hear a rumble of approval from deep in his throat. Even though he moves to the other side of the room and starts jotting down measurements, the heat of his appreciation lingers. One of these days, I'm going to have to admit that you're more than just a pampered princess, huh? Riley, I'm a lot tougher than you give me credit for. One of these days, you're going to realize I'm not just some breakable keepsake. In fact, I'm the opposite. You snap the measuring tape shut and stalk over towards him, purpose in every sway of your hips. I twist, I bend, I spread. Oh, I bet you do. You have no idea how much time passes as you stand there staring at each other, your whole body flushing hot and then cold. Ha, huh, look at them. They haven't even started laying the new carpet yet. We've got this in the bag. You and Riley glance over to find the other team already laying the new roll of carpet. The plan is working better than I thought. <clears throat> By now, almost all the Omegas have stripped down, and almost all the Lambdas watch with approval. You guys ready to see me weld my hammer? Yes, please. I hear you do it so well. 
Uh, I roll. I can lay the new carpet out. Danielle, all you have to do is get ready to pound on my mark and make things fit. Believe me, Riley, I'm ready for all the pounding you have to offer. Riley is surprisingly skilled as he rolls out the carpet and aligns it to the wall. His body is a vision of strength and grace as he works. The trick is to thrust as hard and as long as you can to make it fit. He grips the edges of the carpet and uses his whole body to move it and forward in one long, slow pulse of his hips. You try to fight the image of him using the same motions between your legs and muffle a whimper. Riley knows, really knows what he's doing. Your hands shake as you grab the hammer and start in on the final step, driving the carpet nails into the hardwood underlayer. Don't overdo it, Daniel. Keep your movements slow and steady. He comes up behind you and wraps his arms around your body, his hands sliding over yours on the hammer. But instead of driving the nails home, his mouth drops to your ear. You know, a good leader would let the other team take the win. They deserve it after all their hard work. You glance over to where Dally and Wyatt are instructing their team through the final steps. All we have to do is find something else to do with these last few seconds. Yeah, but at the same time, that's the reason why we're leaders. Finish strong. You let your head fall back just enough to rub against Riley, teasing him with the swaying, straining movements of your hips, and then swing the hammer down, driving the nail straight on the head. Sorry, Riley, you feel good, but not nearly as good as winning. That's the Danielle I know. Nothing gets between you and success. The Megas and Lambdas reach a release a loud cheer as they finish their half of the room. Someone stop the clock. We did it. We did but just a few seconds after us. Everyone sets up a chorus of good-natured groans as they take in your perfectly carpeted half of the room. How is that even possible? You two can't do anything without arguing. You let your gaze slide over Riley's, your whole body flushing as you consider all the different activities you've been up to. We don't argue over everything. You step back to admire your handiwork, impressed with how professional the results look. We did it. Riley nudges you, drawing your attention to the way the Gammas are practically salivating as they watch the sexy display. Looks like a few of the Gammas are enjoying the way we handled ourselves in here. Damn, now I wish we'd be the ones to lay all that carpet. Ha ha! Ha ha! Shut up. A few hours later, you and your crew are standing in front of the house, sanding down the window frame so the glass can be replaced. I never thought I'd see the day and have so much fun working with cut glass. Check out how hard my nips are. These babies could cut glass too. God help me. <laughs> I'm just saying. Trevor turns towards her, flashes her spare torso. Delia rolls her eyes, but you can see her smile as she continues sanding. I don't know how or why, but the spirit of competition always puts us in a good mood. Fingers are starting to feel numb from all the sandpaper, so you pause just long enough to watch Riley. He's rapidly becoming the man in charge, issuing orders like he was born to do it. Alright guys, once this load is ready to go, we can start piling up the scrap wood. Do you think we should lay out a tarp before we start painting this section? Nah, we have to replace that flooring anyway, so don't worry about minor spills. In fact, if you want to turn that wood into your own personal canvas, we even might have uh, be able to sell it original lambda artwork oh that's so sweet of you how did you know i'm an art major riley's really keeping morale up his charisma riley notices you watching him and flushes you a smirk before you can pretend you didn't see him he's already looping across the yard to join you make sure you remember to blink when you're staring at me lambda we wouldn't want you to getting paint chips in your eyes Riley. You're weirdly really good at this. Just when I think I've got you figured out, you go and throw a curveball at me. You're only started unraveling the mystery that is Riley Coin. And if you ask nicely, I can unravel a little faster. I'll even make a show out of it. Oh, seriously, how do you know all this? What needs to be done? Which tools to use? How to get people motivated? Experience, mostly. 
I've been working for my dad's carpentry business every summer since uh, I was barely old enough to hold a screwdriver. Really? That's actually impressive. He shrugs, but your words bring a red flush to his cheeks. It's not that big of a deal. He may wants me to take over the business after I graduate, but I'm not sold on the idea yet. I feel like I'm made for something other than sandpaper and nails. You pause and consider him, your lower lip between your teeth. What would you rather do with your life? You mean other than finally get Alpha House all to myself? An enigmatic grin curls his lips. I guess you'll have to get to know me better to find out. For the start, you suddenly realize there's nothing you'd like to do more. There's so much I don't know about him. For all of his constant joking and flirting, he rarely talks about himself. Oh, hey! Listen, Pixelberry has started this new thing. It's called Deprogramming the Men. Ever so slowly, you ladies will start figuring us out. Maybe this is for the better. I don't know. <laughs> oh, finally, you and Riley are working together in one of the bedrooms on your final task, repainting sections of the walls with scorched damage. The trick to painting a wall this size is to move in a V shape, so you don't waste any movement. He comes up behind you and lifts your arm. Your heart pounds as with a slow, careful stroke. He moves your roller in the shape he indicates. Your arm trembles, but not from exertion. As he speaks, Riley brings his mouth low to your ears, hip flush with your ass. I hate to brag, but I'm kind of an expert at working to a wet edge. You're making that up. That's not what it's really called. Nobody does innuendos like the construction business. Laying pipe, finding studs, vibratory drivers, you name it. And we'll find a way to make it dirty. Instead of pulling away, Riley continues guiding your strokes with his assurance and strength at your back. You make quick work at the first wall. That's one of the reasons why there's not many women in this business, is why. Not bad, Lambda. I'll have you in a construction hat and work boots in no time. Because it takes a certain type of woman. As you move on to the next wall, Riley works with the same easy confidence as before. You can't help but be impressed. And notices a tremble in your arms turns into butterflies low in your belly. Wait, I can't be actually having feelings for Riley. <gasps> no! Come on, Danielle. It's just... Because we're spending so much time together. Just because you've been forced to play nice doesn't mean there's anything there. As if to fortify yourself, you pick up a roller and very purposely start painting in straight lines. Hey, what happened to my wet edge? Not everything needs to be wet all the time. My way works just fine. <sighs> That's not what you were saying the other night, besides you missed a spot. You whirl to find a huge space you skipped over. You slap some pain over it to find that Riley is back to smirking at you in a way you don't trust for a second. Especially when he dabs a swipe of paint on your nose. There, both spots have uh, you missed or covered. Riley, you want a paint fight? You got a paint fight. Without thinking, you pick up your paintbrush and lunge at his face, catching him on the cheek as you slather paint all over his sharp cheekbones. Oh, it's on now, Lambda. I'm going to make you pay for that. You squeal as he holds up a brush and flicks a huge paint splatter up your bare arm. The trick is winning paint war is to mark as much territory as possible, which means that arm belongs to me now. He exhales sharply at the possessive note in his voice, belonging to Riley, even for a few minutes, suddenly seems like the only thing you want. Time out. There's no way I'm letting you ruin a perfectly good outfit with your barbaric ways. Typical lambda always worried about appearances. He looks so disappointed that you flash him a mischievous grin and start reaching for your zipper. Of course, there's one way we could fix a problem like that. <sighs> Finish the job. And that's by finishing this job so we can go home. You drop your hands and leave your zipper alone, determined to stay professional. A typical Lambda 2, so close to having fun time, but always a good girl in the end. You ignore the teasing note in his voice and start painting the wall again disappointed in the lost opportunity until Dahlia pops her head in the room. Oh, wow. You're almost done. Good work, you two. Thanks, Dahlia. We'll uh, be out as soon as we finish this last bit. The sooner I am out of enclosed space with Riley, the better. It was too close of a call already. 
Oh no, you might catch feelings. By the time you're finished, Gamma House looks even better than before the fireworks incidents. You and Riley shake hands with the Gamma President on their front porch as the Greek Life Supervisor looks on. Not bad, you two. This is an excellent start to your required community service. I have to admit, I'm genuinely impressed with how well today went. You were bitching just a couple hours ago. It's the least we can do to help out our fellow frats. A sense of pride wells in you until the Gamma President leans forward and lowers his voice so the supervisor won't hear. But a few hours of painting doesn't change how much you hurt Greek life here at VCSU. He's still mad. Will anything we do to make amends ever be enough? As you struggle to come up with a response that won't make things worse, you hear a shout from the curb. Danielle, why is it that every time I come to find you, you're messing around with the Omegas? You take one look at your dad's expression and hurry over to head him off. The last thing I need is for him and Riley to have more face-to-face -face time. Dad! When will you stop being so judgmental? You flush angrily, unable to hide your frustration at your dad continued anti-Omega campaign. Dad, you're not being fair. Lambda and Omega worked really hard to fix up Gamma House today. I guess it doesn't look too bad, but your focus should be on school, not manual labor. She kinda has to do this, you dumb dumb. Walk with me for a minute, Daniel. I want to hear more about this little project. I suss him. I'm serious. I really do suss your dad. Your dad takes you by the arm and leads you down the street, but your steps drag. The last thing you want right now is another lecture from your father. Working together to repair Gamma House was my idea. Smart, huh? We knocked out some community service and started building goodwill among the frats. Coming up with good ideas has always been your strong suit. I just hope Riley doesn't try to take all the credit. Actually, Riley was the one who took the lead on the site. He knows a lot about construction business. What it you mean is that he stood back and watched while you and Lambdas did all the work? Dad... Riley and I have more in common than you think. We're not so different, Riley and I. You'd be surprised how often we agreed with each other. Oh, you are nothing like that boy, Danielle. And if you can't see that, you're in more trouble than I feared. You shake your head and keep walking, unsure how to make your dad see reason. Riley showed a sincere authoritative side today, one I wish dad could see for himself. I know you think I'm being unreasonable, but I only want what's best for you. And what's best for you is to cut ties with that snake in the grass as soon as possible. As far as you're concerned, that's the final straw. Dad, enough. I don't know why you have such a low opinion of Riley, but he's my friend, and you never even gave him a chance to prove himself. Your dad sighs heavily, even though he relents. You get the feeling he doesn't believe the words coming out of his own mouth. If anyone can help Riley coin an Omega Psy turn over a new leaf, I'm sure it's you, Danielle. I just hope you don't live to regret it. As the day winds down and your father gives me a tension in my neck, everyone heads home for the night. Your dad's words weigh heavily on your heart as you set about getting ready for bed. I don't understand why dad is so anti-Riley or why it bothers me that I can't change his mind. A few months ago, I had completely agreed with him about the Omegas, but now his opinion seems unfounded and unfair. Oh my god, guys, everyone, stop. Brace yourself, she's developing a conscience. The door clicks open as Riley slips into your shared room, wet from the shower and dressed in his revealing pajamas. But you barely register his presence as you plug in your phone and set your alarm. Wait, no comments on my apps? No demands to, for me to stop flexing in front of the mirror? Something must be wrong. Quick, call a doctor. Riley, I don't... understand why my dad hates you so much. He's so caught up in your reputation, he won't see you for who you really are. You're surprised Riley doesn't tease you about your compliment. Instead, he just looks at you with concern. Did he say something to you today? I'm just so tired of my dad thinking the worst of me. And of you! No matter how many times I try to defend you, he refuses to listen. Riley quietly settles onto the bed beside you, side brushes softly against yours, and you can feel the body heat radiating from his silky pajamas. People look down on me. is old news. If I can brush it off, then you should have no problem doing the same. 
You bolt upright, your sadness replaced by a red-hot surge of anger. You turn to face a surprising-looking Riley, your blood pounding so fast it makes you feel lightheaded. Don't you dare say that. You were the glue that held the whole team together today. You stepped up, took the lead, you were the reason we pulled it off, and you made sure everyone had fun while we did it. Why, Lambda, are you admitting that you finally see the benefits of not taking everything so seriously? You throw up your hands in a gesture of surrender. Yes, Riley wins. Sometimes it's okay to let loose sometimes. Even it's a little bit of fun. An intrigued glint enters his eye, sparking something similar low in your belly. Look at you, finally casting aside the perfect daddy's girl persona and letting yourself go. You give him a playful shove, but he catches your wrists easily in his hand. How does it feel to finally live your truth? You're such a pain in the ass sometimes, you know that? Of course I know it. The question is, what are you going to do about it? He gives your wrists a strong tug, sending you both toppling. As you try to wriggle out from underneath him, he shifts his hips to pin you to the bed. His face hovers a few inches above your own, his lips curved into a smile as you struggle to find your breath. I'll ask you one more time, Danielle. He drops one hand to your waist where your sleep shirt is ridden up with both the soft curve over your stomach. His touch escapes lightly over your skin, sending a spike of longing straight to your core. Are you the same woman you were at the beginning of this semester, or have you finally started to see the light? You bite back a soft moan as his fingers curl against your hip. Your whole body strains to feel the touch slide up between your thighs, coaxing them open inch by inch. I can't deny it, it was hot watching Riley be in charge all day, but now could be my chance to be the one commanding him instead. I roll. You boot your hands over the top of Riley's, stopping him short before sitting up. We can't, Riley. You know as well as I do, it's only a matter of time before the whole house finds out what we've been up to. The alliance between the um, Lambdas and Omegas is tenuous as it is. Let's not shatter it before we give it a chance to take off. Interesting. So what you're saying is that the two of us uniting would work against our frats uniting? Uh, kinda. You're surprised when Riley's playfulness turns into something more serious as he sits up beside you, giving your shoulder a nudge. Thank you for defending me, dear dad earlier, Danielle. It means a lot you're willing to stand up for me. I'm sorry it took me this long to do it. I'm not. It's the perfect timing for the next phase of my plan. I thought our plan was to behave like good little boys and girls while we do our community service. Oh, we're gonna behave, but there's one way to show Greek Row and the Oversight Committee that the Omega and Lambdas are working together. Your jaw drops as Riley gets down on one knee, laughter and a warm glow of appreciation lighting him from within, as if by magic he pulls out a ring pop. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dead pulls this you? Wait, does this mean... Madam President, will you do me the honor of... Greek marrying me. I have no clue what the hell that means. I guess we'll find out next time. Uh, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember that if you did enjoy the content, to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description. Plenty of things to check out, ways to support, and whatnot. Um, aside from that, let me know your comments down in the comment section below. It'd be greatly appreciated to know your feelings on this chapter or this book in general. Um... Aside from that, hold on, let me let me di just digest for a minute the whole dad thing. All right, so I'm assuming that your dad, being a professor at a college, also went to college to become said professor. So with that being said, um, I don't know. Maybe he was never a person who was in a frat or maybe someone in a frat sabotaged him or maybe I don't know. Oh, well, we don't know much about the dad, do we? That's part of the problem. Maybe the dad was once like Riley. And your mother was once like you. Which, that has been something that has said a few times. And maybe his wife, your mother, ended up reining him in and tamping him down. From the wild man he once was. Which, we do have that effect on Riley, let's be honest. And maybe he just sees himself in Riley. That's one hypothesis. The other hypothesis is, is, again, like I said, 
someone maybe wronged him. He wasn't a part of frat. Maybe he was part of frat. Maybe he ended up failing. A lot of possibilities in that realm, if you get my meaning. But, um, yeah, it's either one of two, in, in all honesty. Let's be honest. Um, it's, it's kind of weird that the dad isn't telling us why. Like, we've asked a couple times, and just no, just no nothing, right? No nothing. Um, I mean, let, let's be honest, your parents' approval isn't always something that you need, right? And sometimes you have to go against the, the I guess they call it the grain, or go against whatever, but sometimes you got to go against it for your own happiness. Um, but sometimes you do have to heed your parents' words as well, because they at least most parents that give a shit about you uh, and be your judge of that. I'm trying to just say some people do care about you and then some people just want to control you. So you, you, you have to like really the best way, best way to figure that out way is, is to, to like literally and figuratively learn to disc your, disconnect yourself from emotions and look at it from a normal, logical, outside perspective in which has nothing to do with you and you're trying to solve, say, for instance, a friend's problem or just a random stranger's. That is the best way to look at it sometimes and to see if they're trying to control you or if they're trying to be helpful for you. You have to separate your emotions. I know it's part of human nature, but you just literally have to. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.